Hello grade 11. So we continue today with identities. This is part two. Just a recap. Yesterday we did the two basic identities. Tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. And the second one sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. And if we go down here we did example one and we also did example two. Now we're going to continue with 2b today and do a few more. But I first want to take us back to this little section here. Now, in with identities and with trig, we can also do factorizing. And all the factorizing um, knowledge that we've used in previous years, we need to keep with us for this trig as well. So these dots, remember, that's the difference of two squares. In fact, let's do a different color here. So there's difference of two squares, and we looked at an example using that yesterday. There's also common factor. So let's look at an example like this. So if you had sine squared x plus 2 sine x, you can see clearly that sine x is common, right? Because there's sine x there and there's sine x there. So sine of x is common. So if we take it out as a common factor, we're left with sine x plus 2. Then there's also the trinomials. And remember, we recognize trinomial because the first term is squared. The middle term is just normal and the third term is a constant. So it's got three terms. Now, if this one, so that's term one, term two, term three. If we factorize that, it would look like this because sine x times sine x is going to be sine squared x. Then the last term, one times two is going to be two. And then let's get rid of all this color here for now. And then remember you have, when you foil it, the outer one will be 2 times sine x or sine x times 2. So that's 2 sine x. And then the inner one there is 1 times sine x, which is sine x. And that leaves us with sine squared x plus 3 sine x plus 2. Because these two here would be considered like terms. <coughs> so if you need to factorize this we end up with our two brackets looking like that but some of you I know like this whole k method so we're going to use that here and I've got an example so if this was our trinomial that we were working with we could say let sine of x equal k and if we use that substitution there then we would end up with a trinomial k squared plus 3k plus 2 which then would be easy to factorize k times k, 2 times 1, and the middle term would be plus 2 plus 1. And then k would once again be replaced with sine x in both cases, and we would end up with exactly the same answer. Oopsie, wrong place. The same answer there. Just the bracket swapped around. Okay, so it's to be able to recognize factorizing of a trinomial with trig as well. So let's do an example with that. We've done example 1. We did 2a. Now let's have a look at 2b. We need to prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So let's start with my left-hand side. So we've got sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta plus 1 all over cos squared theta. Now if we look at that, I can see that the top is most definitely a trinomial one two three terms so this one here is going to be sine of theta times sine of theta plus one plus one why because one times one is one then one times sine and one times sine is going to give us two sine So that factorized trinomial is going to be sine theta plus 1, sine theta plus 1. Then at the moment we've got cos squared theta at the bottom. Now that is not going to cancel with something, but I'm hoping by now that you are spotting that cos squared theta can also be written as 1 minus 
sine squared theta because of the second identity here. Let's go back and have a look. This identity here, if I want cos squared, I can take the sine squared across. And so all I'm doing here is I'm replacing cos squared with 1 minus sine squared. And that is going to give us dots if you look at the denominator. So if that is the difference of two squares, it'll be 1 plus sine theta, 1 minus sine theta. Now we look and we think, okay, can I cancel anything? I've got a plus and a plus. So that sine theta plus 1 is the same as 1 plus sine theta. And I'm left with sine theta plus 1 over 1 minus sine theta. And if I look at my right hand side, that is exactly what I'm looking for. Because sine theta plus 1 is the same as 1 sine theta. There we've done it. Now let's... <coughs> Okay, that was your homework from yesterday. Now let's look at another example here. Example 3. Now example 3, we've got this long left-hand side here. And my very big left-hand side has to somehow equal my right-hand side. So let's have a look and think, okay, okay, there's no tan. There's no direct use of the trig identities that I can use. But as soon as I have two terms here, and there are two terms, I want to combine them with a common denominator. And that is always the case. 99% of the time, if you have two or more terms, you want to combine them into one term with a common denominator. And what's my common denominator here? Exactly. 1 minus sine theta, 1 plus sine theta. So let's work out what goes on top. This is already 1 minus sine theta, so it's going to be 1 times 1 plus sine theta plus that plus down there. 1 plus sine theta leaves me with 1 minus sine theta times 1. And that's no problem there. So now we keep looking. Okay, I can simplify this. Plus minus that disappears, so I'm left with 2 at the top. And before we look at the bottom and rewrite it let's have a look that I could multiply out I could foil this because this is just 1 times 1 which is 1 minus sine times sine which is sine squared remember because this is just the reverse of dots it's multiplying out 1 plus 1 minus so now I look at keep looking at where I want to end up. I want to end up there. And if I look there, I've got a 2 already in the top. So yay, I've done that. You think, how can I get from 1 minus sine squared to cos squared? And that's it. It's just my rearranged identity. So 1 minus sine squared is just equal to cos squared. Because if we go back here, back, back, back to my identity, back, 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 back. There we go. Cos squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So if I've got 1 minus sine squared, I can just go straight back to cos squared. There it is. And that's equal to my right-hand side. Let's do one more. Okay, so now we focused on B. <coughs> Let's use a different color here. So now I'm looking and I'm thinking I've got sine squared plus sine squared. But I, the temptation might be to add those two. But I can't add them because this here is a term here. Okay, so I can't add that, but what I can do, I've got a sign here. It's sorry, a tan. So I've got my identity. So I'm going to start working with my left hand side, and I'm going to go sine squared x plus sine squared x times sine squared x over cos squared x. That's direct um, changing with one of my identities. And now you look at, and once again, I've got a scenario where I've got two terms. This is one term, two terms. So I'm going to combine it with a common denominator. And my common denominator is going to be cos squared. So now this, remember, is going to be over 1. See, go away. Over 1. 
So if I combine these, 1 into cos squared is cos squared. So I'm going to go cos squared x times sine squared x plus. It's already over cos squared. So I'm just left with sine squared times sine squared, which is not going to be. It's going to be sine to the 4x. <coughs> now we look and we think, okay, hang on. If I look at that numerator there, I have got a common cos, no, 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 not a common cos. Can you see there's a common sign? So I'm going to take out sine squared because it is a common factor. And if I take it out, I'm left with cos squared plus sine squared because I've taken two of them out. I'm left with two and that will all be over cos squared. Now I'm hoping that you are beginning to spot these identities immediately. So now I can see very clearly that this is a direct identity. It's my second identity. That is just equal to 1. And this is sine squared over cos squared. And we spoke about that. If you've got sine squared over cos squared, it's just tan squared. So this sine squared over cos squared can be replaced with tan squared. And that's just 1. So my final answer is tan squared x. Which, of course, if we take it back, is my right-hand side. Yay! Lovely. <clears throat> okay, I'm hoping that you followed that. It would be very good for you to go and practice it again without looking at my notes. Now, I've got an example 4a for you, which I want you to have a look at. We've got to prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And in this scenario here, we want to first change tan and tan to be sine over cos and then we combine it with a common denominator so please go and have a look at that on your own and copy it down as you copy it down hopefully you will follow what's happened and then have a look at number b once again here if you look at what's given on the left hand side you have tan and on the right hand side you have cos and sine so the first thing you want to do is you want to change these, all of these tans to be sine over cos. And that's what you do in the first step. Tan becomes sine over cos. Tan becomes sine over cos. And then from there you just do your basic algebra. You find your common denominator, you tip and times, and off you go. But as I said, please copy these examples down yourself so that you understand and know from one step to the next. And then if you could please go and do the following on page 123, exercise 6, A, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and B, 3, and 7. Good luck, grade 11s. The memo will follow tomorrow.